Cutters and Kings straight ahead from the Nassau Coliseum. The drop of the puck is up next. 34 years of age, Kelly Rudy on the left side. Lord Conroy look alike, doesn't he, with that hairdo? Jamie McLennan is going to be in goal again for the Islanders, gaining a lot of respect from the coaching staff. Dan Marowelli drops the puck to get us underway tonight from the Nassau Coliseum. Kevin Todd of Los Angeles hit at center by Schneider of the Islanders. And it's Pat Conacher, number 15, for the Kings, moving it ahead. The pass misses Daryl Sador, comes all the way down. Schneider comes back to touch up. And we'll have a chance to set the matchups for you in the opening going here. The Islanders have Micah Avazov dressed tonight, wearing uniform number 10 as you look at New member of Hockey's Hall of Fame, Larry Robinson. You might have remembered Denton Cole wearing number 10 last week. Today, Ivazov's got it with Cole back at Utah. But, but I'll tell you what, a very emotional speech given by Larry Robinson and also a very emotional moment, I think, for anybody who watched it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, you get caught up in the moment with, uh, with anybody being inducted into the Hollywood Hall. And was brought to tears. So I'm sure with some people who checked him out. Puck is in behind the Los Angeles net. Steve Finn, number 29, checked by Pluck. So Ivers up centers. Lacola stopped in front. And the Kings carry out. Eric Lacroix pushes it over the Islander blue line. And it's Schneider back to get it. The teams make the first line change of the night. Dan Pluck flicks it deep, heads to the bench. That's where the trouble started the other night. And uh, the requisite number of players are on ice. However, as the... Islanders managed to get it deep into the Los Angeles zone once again. Rob Cowley works it around the board. Now it comes back to Marty McSorley, number 33. You see McSorley and Wendell Clark of the Islanders? They went a couple of times last week in L.A. Clark and McSorley, Severin and O'Donnell, Lakota and Tonkin. Combatants in that game. Won by the Kings 9-2. Brian McCabe, number four for the Islanders. Up to Zygmunt Poppy. Now to Clark at the red line, and he flicks the puck deep. Whirling out of the Los Angeles end now is the veteran Rick Tuckett, who hits the Islander line and puts the puck around the board. Baskey for New York. Couldn't get it out as O'Donnell pitched to poke it back into the corner. Dimitri Christich, number eight, hit by Sweeney of the Islanders, centering feet off the stick of McClendon. And the Islanders come to center. Coffey carries in. Now to Baskey, who shoots one, and Rudy took the angle away. Kind of a shot the goaltenders love to have for their opening shot of the hockey game. In Kelly Rudy's case, the season. Now Marty McInnes shoots it up the right wing. It misconnects. Will carry all the way down for an icing call against the Islanders. Well, I haven't played uh, all season long, so uh, uh, with the excitement comes a lot of nervousness. Uh, I'm at least two and a half months uh, behind these guys, so I'm a little bit anxious to get the game going and uh, get my first one out of the way. Well, it's his 11th period. Well, actually, it's his 12th now. Kelly Rudy playing against his old team, the New York Islanders. Seven wins, three losses, and no ties in the first 11 appearances. You'll notice number 26 in white, Patrick Flatley, back in action for the Islanders tonight. I should say, uh, not technically back in action because he's only missed the last two in a row. Here's a drive by McInnes that sails wide. Well, Check that three in a row, but he's missed 11 out of the last 13 overall. That's the significant number. Bothered by a groin injury. You might note that Kelly Rudy's most fabled night in a New York Islander uniform came in that four-overtime win against the Washington Capitals in the 1987 playoffs. But he's the only remaining Islander from that game. Kings get the puck back into Islander territory. Kasparitis takes Bernardo down. And a two-minute fine will be imposed against that man, Darius Gasparitis. The L.A. Kings will put the power play to work. Don't hook too long. Well, the Kings put the seventh-ranked power play in the National Hockey League to work. Brian McCabe gets the clear. And will set things up for the Kings, at least at this moment. Wayne Gretzky not on the ice. Puck being carried out by Sador to Yari Curry. Rink wide pass misses Siplikov and comes down the ice. And now number 99 is on the playing surface and there he is with the puck up to rick tockett for the kings stick check at the line knocked it away and it's cleared out by sweeney minute 14 to go on the los angeles power play kings played last night 
They lost in Philadelphia to the Flyers 5 to 2. The Islanders have not played since their game in Anaheim last Friday night. McLennan tried to help himself. Curry kept it in. But now it's McKinnis shooting it out of the zone with 57 seconds left of the Los Angeles power play. By the numbers, the Islanders have been doing a pretty good job in the last five games. They've killed 22. Oh, look out. Now here's a chance for Gretzky. Centers for Kristich. But he had a stick tied up by Vasky. Gretzky behind the net. Hit by Klaw. Schneider's got the puck. Kristich bothers him. Now a chance in front is denied as Vasky made the block on Yetmanev. And the puck hammered down the ice by Schneider with a half minute to go on the Los Angeles power play. Back comes Gretzky. Up to Kristich. Dietrich Kristich with a drop pass to Yachmanev. Chipped away by Flatley. It came out of the zone. Brought back in offside by Cowie. And the Islanders living dangerously in their own end. Oh boy, big, big mistakes. Crucial mistakes. How many times is Gretzky ever going to make a bad pass in the offensive zone for a scoring opportunity? Never. Well, okay, Ed, don't get too excited. It. He's allowed to do it. He did it here. Here the Islanders hand the puck away. Gretzky's got it. Watch where the pass goes. In the skates? Yes. Wow. No, not Wayne Gretzky. He's not infallible. You look at his head. He's up. He's looking. And there. Put it back. Whenever you pass the puck back a little, it takes some of the timing off. You're not used to passing back. Put it in Chris Stitch's skate. And the Islanders give it away again. Kelly Rudy fails them up. 12 seconds remaining to the Los Angeles power play. Islanders penalty killing was good on the West Coast trip, killing off 12 out of 13. And now it's Brian McCabe flicking it over the Los Angeles line. There he is, Kasparitis. He's up and out of the box. And the Islanders have killed the Los Angeles power play. No shots got through to the net. Kevin Todd in the L.A. zone. And the drop to Cowie. Severin breaks it up. Brent Severin knocked down. And back out to center it comes. McCabe turns on Pat Conacher. Severin's lost his helmet. He's the guy playing without a hockey hat. And now the puck sent in by the game. <laughs> you know how cool that's going to feel? <laughs> Probably pretty refreshing, too, as long as he doesn't get knocked on the coconut. Alfie up the right side for Clark too far. Swept back out by Berg and brought in offside. Maybe, race four. Maybe Pat Flatley gave Rich Pilon his bad groin just so he could get back in the lineup. <laughs> That's what's kept Flatley out. 11 of the last 13. Of course, Pilon's weight had been an issue, too. That apparently had been gotten down to a sufficient level for him to get back in. And now the groin is keeping him out. Of course, the hand, the wrist, had been the biggest problem. Hasn't played yet this year. Rehabbing the surgical wrist. No score here with 6.20 gone in the first period. Dennis Vasky handling the puck in the Islanders' zone. Clark couldn't hold it at center. Gretzky for Granado. Broke it up. Sent back deep by Gretzky. And if they're watching Pilon's weight, what can he do with a sore groin? <laughs> maybe, maybe he needs that extra weight just to keep from pulling the groin. Sidor for the Kings. This is Yakmanev with the pass. It carries all the way down. Gasparitis touches up, and we'll have a faceoff coming deep in the Los Angeles zone. Back to Palfi. I should say Flatley. That drive sails wide. It's Sweeney, McKinnis, and Flatley, the forward unit here for the Islanders. Yakmanev knocked that one down out of midair. Gretzky plays it up ahead. And Tony Granato with a shot. It's Gasparitis' stick. Each of those two players, Granato and Gasparitis, missing back ends or at least half of back-to-back -back games recently. Granada didn't play last night. He's had back problems and assorted other problems throughout his career. You saw Kasparaitis before he missed the Anaheim game. Gretzky to Yakmanev. Knocked away by McKinnis. The Anaheim game, the back end of the home-and-home, -home, or the back-to-back -back games with the Kings. Turnaround shot by King, and he's being held. I guess that's what he was trying to do, and that's the story I was trying to tell you. Bertuzzi circling at the line to King. Now to Severin. Quick shot stopped by Rudy. And Dimitri Kristich dumps it out of the zone for Los Angeles. Now it's McCabe spinning it around for Bertuzzi. Well, he really looked like a soccer goal in that shot, didn't he? <laughs> Rob Cowley slams it off the boards. Bertuzzi got a piece of it. And it's brought out by Los Angeles. We're covered in center, though, by Seamock. But King could not get out in time. And so the offsides whistled against the Islanders. 
Somebody would love to score a goal more than Derek King. You saw him a moment ago. He turned around, slammed the puck towards the net. One goal, seven assists in eight games. Just it, that isn't going to do it. When you think of McGinnis, King, Bertuzzi, Lindros, and Sweeney, and Lindros is not in the game, they've only had four goals, 22 assists. They've had 26 points amongst the five players in the last five games. You know, Derek King had been a somewhat prolific goal scorer in this league for a few years, and his critics will say, yeah, it came when Pierre Turgeon was the sentiment. What's the difference, though, in King's game when he's not scoring as opposed to when he's been successful? He's a player that has to play with the puck. He's an offensive player. He has speed. He has a shot. He's very creative. But when you're playing most of the hockey game between your end of the ice and the center ice area, you're not effective. So the moral to that story would appear to be if John Maloney can engineer a deal for a legitimate centerman who can get him the puck, he might be getting two players when you think about it. No, that's a good way of putting it. No doubt about it. Assuming, of course, that King responds to this mystery centerman. <laughs> if, in fact, it becomes a centerman. If, in fact, a deal is made. Uh, well, of course, it takes two to make the deal, so... We pointed out the Islanders are trying very hard. I mean, why have the asset of a Kirk Muller sitting at home not playing? You have to get something for him. As Don Maloney said, if you missed our pregame show during game time, that nothing's imminent. And there have been published reports that indicated Maloney might be on the verge of completing something perhaps today. Not yet. Yes. It's better for him not to get too excited until it happens. Wendell Clark had rooting with a look as Tony Granato. He loves to dipsy doodle, plays well with the puck. Here's the puck to Yakmanev, his close-in shot. And you see, under the circumstances, if things were different for the Islanders, I'm sure Jamie McLennan would have handed that puck off to one of the Islanders and turned them loose. They'd have caught a couple of the Kings, but you can't do that when things aren't going well for you. Yakmanev is the beneficiary of the changed political climate. In the early stages of Russian players coming over to the NHL, they'd established themselves somewhat. Now they're able to get over and even play Canadian juniors, as Yakmanev <laughs> did at North Bay. Get more North American training, which is significant because the rink in yes. juniors is the standard rink in the National Hockey League, at least in most cases. Different style of play. Certainly makes matters easier for a general manager, less of a crapshoot when you've at least seen a guy play under North Americanized conditions. Well, I suppose the bottom line to it all is, Howie, if you're very good on the ice surface that uh, you play in Europe, you can still be very good on the ice surface here. If you're a good player, you can adjust to it. Kelly Ruder, uh, Rudy made a blocker save on a McKinnis shot. And it's Brent Severin whipping it around the board. 8.45 to go. First period, no score. Glad you're spending Thanksgiving Eve with us here on Sports Channel. As Cowie drives one straight through to Jamie McLennan in the Islander goal. On now to McCabe. Puts it up the boards. Comes back in by Wendell Clark. Now it's McCabe working it off the board. No Islander home. And so Sean O'Donnell slaps it back behind the Islander net. Severin couldn't connect with a teammate. And perhaps an icing against the Islanders. Aki Bird covers up, and there will be a face-off deep in the Islanders' zone. He's the youngest player in the NHL that Aki Bird Miller is. And now Clark for the Islanders, up to Travis Green. Tried to feed Poppy, instead spins it around the boards. Kelly Rudy gave it away to Green. Quick shot, they score! Wendell Clark in front for a probable deflection. It's one to nothing, Islanders. Quick play, good read of the play. Mistake by the Los Angeles Kings, their first one in this hockey game, and it's in the net. Wendell Clark standing on the top of the goal crease takes the pass, a beauty from Travis Green. There's Kelly Rudy behind the net, slams it around the board. Ah, uh -uh, wrong move. There's the quick pass, tipping it in. Wendell Clark, five goals in his last four plus games. As Kelly Rudy makes that mistake. And it's costly. Wendell Clark now with five goals in his last four games. And for the Islanders, a novelty. A first period goal here at the Nassau Coliseum. It's only the second time it's happened. 
all season. Yeah, this is their ninth game at the Coliseum, and only the second first period goal that they've scored. It's not just one of those idle statistics you just throw out there. It's indicative of the slow starts they've had here at the Coliseum, especially. So Clark from Green at 12-10 for Wendell is eighth of the year. And the Islanders the one to nothing lead. Dean Chanel off the boards for King. Chips it over the line, smacked back out by O'Donnell. Nice crowd tonight here at the Coliseum. Eve of a holiday, Gretzky in town. And a real big crowd getting an enthusiastic start to things tonight. Dean Chanel in the Islanders zone. Kasimak at the red line. And along that of Bertuzzi. Checked away at the line by Cowie. And worked back in by King for New York. Marty McSorley for Los Angeles. Stick handles to center. McSorley over the Islander line, but that play is offside. And how the Islanders would respond to the problem the other night. Doesn't look like anything serious is going to develop here. Makota and McSorley being separated, as well as a host of other players. McSorley and Wendell Clark got a couple of bouts last week in L.A. But anyway, line changes specifically designed to draw some attention tonight. Let's get to Stan Fischler downstairs. Stan? Well, Howie, I've been watching the island the bench. They seem very much more alert than they had been. The changes have been very good, but their best change of all came right after they scored the goal. That's the kind of line change they love, Howie. Are they yelling uniform numbers or positions at each other? The no, way no, no. It's uh, Milbury doing most of the orchestrating. Plot on the intercept for the Islanders to Ava's off with a drive, and that's stopped by Rudy. Plot held off on the rebound. And it's McSorley playing it out of the zone for L.A. McCabe hustling back to get it. McCabe wore the A's, the assistant captain for the games on the West Coast trip. But with Patrick Flatley back as the captain, Schneider's got an A, so does Wendell Clark. McCabe's got a little experience with a slightly heavier sweater. It's a good shift for Avizov. He made a good play coming out of his own end, used his option. He could pass it or he could carry it. He carried it. Pat Conacher shoots the puck all the way down the ice. And the icing indicated will bring the face off back into Los Angeles territory. That's McCabe without the A. Again, in case you're just joining us, you look at Wendell Clark. Micah Avizov wearing number 10 tonight, not the 34 that he wore on the West Coast. Well, that was Dan Cole was wearing that, wasn't he? Yeah. Right on the coast. But there is a good look at Micah Avizov. And if you like to keep track of historical things on the Islander roster, there are only two players. You see that he was the sixth round. There's only two players in Islander history, alphabetically, that come before Avizov. Keith Acton is first, and Bruce Aflac is second. Just thought that little historical note would be of great interest. I forgot Bruce Aflac even played for the Islanders. <laughs> yeah. I remember it was St. Louis Blue. Yeah, he wasn't here for a coffee. It was a half a tea bag. Why, when I was a little kid and I had those Bruce Aflac posters in my bedroom, he was wearing a Blues uniform. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> I haven't played it. Patrick Flatley clears the zone for the Islanders, and Daryl Sador hammers it right back in. And no, Bruce Affleck's career wasn't all that many years ago. Marty McInnes couldn't handle that puck in center for New York. Sador plays it the other way. Yakmanev touched it to Gretzky, but his pass came out of the zone. Backhanded in again by Granado for the Kings. Under five minutes to go. First period. One to nothing Islanders. And they've held the Kings to three shots. Here's Christich trying to center. Schneider breaks it up. Stays with Christich. Comes in front anyway. Bouncing puck. And finally controlled and brought out by Coffey. Turns away from Kings checking. As the Islanders change. On now to Green. Travis Green drives towards the net. Slides one right through the goal crease. To the far side, the pinch by Chanel. Green out from behind the net, but he pushes it wide. Palfi to Clark. Clark centering. That's deflected away. And Christich recovers for the King. But he gave it away to Palfi. Christich got it back, though, and sends Curry to center. The dump in by Curry, covered by Vasky for the Islanders. Tockett chasing. And Vasky plays it off the glass to the Los Angeles line. No one controlling there until Siplikov spins away and drives one. McLennan took the angle away. And Clark for the Islanders. Goes reek wide to Green. Back up for Palfi. And now to Clark. 
Arc to Green. Back behind the net it goes. Cowie steers it around. McCabe with a pinch for Clark behind the net. Centering feed, but that's covered in front by Siplikov. Tockett had a step on the Islanders' defense. No need for McLennan to touch the puck there. They communicated that time, so a Severin touches up the icing call made against the King. Exactly what the goaltender wants. Cut off the angle. 3.20 to go in the opening period. Siplikov trying to get through McCabe. Troy Crowder follows. McLennan slaps that one away, but Crowder has it back. Crowder swings it back behind the net. Round to the near boards. Derek King clears it out. Busted up in center. Now Crowder drops it back to McSorley, but he gave it away to Seamock. Alexander Seamock driving, shooting, and he missed the net. Around to the corner, Bertuzzi puts it back to the near side. Yannick Perot smacked into the boards by King of the Islanders. And that's a souvenir. I'm not so sure Cowie didn't get a stick on that one. C-Mac got in, wanted to get the shot on that. The Islanders had a winger coming down the middle of the ice. Make that long reach of number 77, Rob Cowie. There's C-Mac, cocks his leg there. You see the stick come in just as he went to shoot it. Such a great procedure. Good. You don't like to call it a weapon, but it's a great defensive tool, I guess is what I'm trying to say, if it's used properly. I always talk about penalty killers using their stick properly, and Cowie did that one on c -Mac. Dean Chanel takes a hit from Eric Lacroix as he plays it into the L.A. zone. Avizov chasing. Centers Makota! And Rudy robs Makota, who is right on the edge of the goal crease. Honecker to the red line. Dumps it to the left of McLennan. Clock hit hard by Todd. They both go down. Conacher looking for the puck. Vasky jumps in front of him. And up now to Ivazov. He took a hit. And Bakota flicks it deep. Deep Finn behind the L.A. net. We approach two minutes to go in the first period. It's one to nothing New York. And it almost was two to nothing. But Rudy... Managed to stop Nick Fakota from right out in front. Schneider, this is Sweeney with a pass. O'Donnell works it ahead. Schneider jumps back on it. He's held off by Yachmanev, who's lost his stick. And heads to the bench for a fresh piece of lumber. Back to what's changed bodies. Yachmanov goes off altogether. And the Kings get it deep. Darius Kasparaitis for the Islanders. Lost it to Gretzky in the corner. Granada the set, he scores! Kasparaitis behind the net just kind of waved his stick in disgust as he lost the puck and the Kings have tied it at one. What a shot by Tony Granato but he was well placed and you know if you're in the right spot and you're open Gretzky will get you the puck. How many times does everybody have to say that? Here's the play. Kasparitis misfired when he tried to wheel it up the boards. Gretzky from in close. Two players on him. Marty McGinnis trying to cover him. Kasparitis trying to move the puck up the boards. And here he misfired into the feet of Gretzky. He moved the puck to the stick to Granado and wham. 1-1 one, one tie. Granado with his eight. Gretzky on the assist at 18-25. Wayne Gretzky's are not the feet into which you want to misfire. Gasparitis behind the Islanders' net. Only the fifth shot of the period for the Kings. The Islanders have done a pretty good job over the last 10 minutes or so after a shaky start in their own end. Matthew Schneider back on it at the Islander blue line. And deep into the L.A. zone it goes. Aki Berg, we talked about him for a moment before. He's 18 years old, wearing number five, youngest player in the league. Third player selected overall last year's draft, a native of Finland. Travis Green sails one that deflects over Rudy and behind the net. Puffy, the wraparound, and Rudy stops that. Baskey behind the net. Round the green in the corner. Leaves it to Puffy. Checked by Christich. And now comes Clark. And to Palfi again. Islanders cycling well. Palfi pulled down and a penalty coming up to the Kings. The Islanders will have a power play. <laughs> Just as the fans start to yell, the arm of the referee goes in the air. Got him. Penalty. 33 seconds remaining. Good pressure by the Islanders. Skating well. Cycling. Palfi trying to get to the front of the net. Check a dive. Yeah. Could have went either way on that call, but... 
Kristich holding at 1926. As he gets the stick out, Paul Fee says, why not? I may not get a scoring chance anyway, and that's what the complaint. He took a dive on me. We've studied Slovak around here, you know, lately at least. We, you know, we have, we have a pool student of Slovak. That's our producer, Kevin Meinerger. And he informs me, Shugo, is that how you pronounce his nickname? Shigo? That's Shigo. Never mind the Ziggy stuff. Call him Shigo. You really want to get his attention, yell, Shigo, Shigo. Well, he's not turning around, and you're yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> he knows my voice. He doesn't even want to acknowledge it. So the Islanders put the power play to work. Power play that was 0 for 4 in Anaheim their last time out. Ninth overall of the league, though, and fifth here at the Nassau Coliseum. Clark, Palfi, Green up front. Baskey and Schneider on the points. And this is Schneider, number 72. And unless the Islanders can do a little damage here in the closing 24 seconds, the power play will carry into the second period. Baskey in over the line. Out of Palfi along the boards. Lost the puck. Clark with a shot. Stop rebound. Palfi and Rudy stops that with his elbow. Ten seconds to the period. Clark puts it in front. Rudy tried to just push it behind the net to keep play moving, but we get a whistle long before that. And Poppy had to get out of the way of the stick work over there. That's going to be caught by referee Dan Marowelli. Stephen Finn brought the stick down in Poppy's direction. And it looks like the Islanders are going to have a two-man power play. And the reason is that they should have had it before that, Howie. I believe that when maybe Poppy took a dive the first time, but if we get a look at it here on the next play, Poppy goes to the backhand. The puck goes behind the net. Right here, held and pushed down. Yeah, did he dive again? Hard to say. But it was not that call that got the penalty. It was after that in front of the net in the altercation that got the Los Angeles Kings two men short. Steve Finn. So a minute and 34 seconds will be the time that the Islanders enjoy a two-man power play. Five on three. They have 7.9 seconds to work with here. And despite everything that happened in the corner and in front of the net, it was after the whistle had blown. The last thing that happened, basically, was when that slash by Finn was called. Three seconds to go. It's thrown at the net by McKinnis. McSorley clears the zone as the horn expires. So the Islanders will have a two-man power play for the first 126 of the second period, unless anything else happens. Sport. Now, are you lifting weights? How do you get in such great shape? I don't know. Probably born like that, you know. <laughs> Just working out, you know, every time when I have the opportunity and uh, working hard in the summer. Try to stay, try to keep my diet. Darius, in that first period, the Islanders uh, had a, a clear-cut advantage. They were up one nothing, and then all of a sudden, the puck is in the Islander zone. It seemed to me that you had you're in good shape here. Tell me what happened from this point on when the puck goes in the corner. So first of all, I thought Marty McKean was going to go in the corner, and he stopped. And uh, after that, I went, and I want to go. You see, I want to go left, but I turn right, and uh, I lost the puck to Gretzky. And this guy just passed right away. He sees how it's so good, you know. Tyson, my mistake. I tried to. Do okay. Uh, speaking of Gretzky, you know we've seen you hit the big guys like Messier and Mario Lemieux. Do you want to hit Gretzky? Yeah, I try, but it's too hard, you know, because he sees you any time you're coming, and you just pass right away, you know. I have no time, you know. He has well, good timing. Yes, but you have to wait until he's looking the other way. Got to get him that time, right? He has to have puck, you know, to hit him. <laughs> I got to get the puck. I got a penalty. It was a pretty good period, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great period. Team playing good, you know, playing good defensively, offensively. How are we going to win? I'm sitting next to the bench, and I'm trying to figure out whether the coach is doing anything different with line changes. What does he do to, when you have to go out on the ice? How do you know? Does he tap you on the shoulder? No, he tell, tells us our names, you know, and uh, tells next shift who's going, and we just ready. Second period, you're going to have a two-man advantage. Yeah. What does the team have to do to get another goal? Go we ahead. Try to score, you know. Try to score two goals. That's it. Simple uh, game. Four <laughs> goals, one game. You make it very easy. Yeah. Tell, tell me this. You've played for a lot of coaches. How do you like Milbury? Is he your kind of coach? Yeah, I like him because he let, let's, uh, let me play a lot, you know, and uh, he trusts players. He just doesn't keep guys. If you make mistakes, he doesn't bench, you know, he lets you play. 
let you play your game, you know. I like that. Okay. Good to see you back, Darius. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we want you explain. Yeah, no, I was saying that if, uh, no matter whether you're on a uh, two-man, three-man, or even strength, when the period ends, if you've got the puck in the offensive zone or it's in your end of the ice, that's where they should face off to start. Why start at center ice? Make a one continuous game. <laughs> Just start over where you left off. All right, so the Islanders two men up. And as you saw a moment ago, they've had success lately in that department. Three straight conversions in the five on threes. Travis Green operating along the boards. Hassled by Curry. Green springs off and puts it on Schneider's stick. Adam McKinnis. Coffee from the corner. Steps out, feeds McKinnis. Back to Poppy, loads is in, centers one, it went right through the goal crease. Schneider hustles to keep it in. 50 seconds to the five on three. Now it's Green. Healing backwards, firing, and Rudy clutches that one and holds on for a faceoff. Only made the shot easy for Kelly Rudy to handle. It was a bad angle shot to start with, but it was up high where Kelly Rudy was able to get a good look at it. He's talking with his defenseman now, Marty McSorley. And Sador just come over to get in on the conversation about keeping the path clear. Kelly Rudy, very complimentary as a goaltender. Seems to always find the half full part of the glass. He's probably telling him, good job, I got a good look at the puck. The way to work it. Marty McSorley helping Rudy out. McSorley number 33 got involved in two fights last week. We mentioned it a couple of times already tonight. And it's always worth repeating because of the, if not likelihood, possibility that they'll continue those hostilities. Clark in front of the net on this power play. McSorley protecting the net. Right now it's McSorley and Poppy tied up along the boards. But here's Clark. Quick shot and a kick save by Rudy. And McSorley clears the zone. Good scoring chance, good shot, another good stop by Kelly Rudy. 25 seconds to the five on three, 50 seconds to the power play overall for New York. Matthew Schneider dances to the uh, to the Los Angeles line. On now to Clark. Out to McKinnis. McKinnis to Schneider. Closes and centers Poppy, but he fanned on it. And it's cleared by Todd, and Poppy will not have an easier chance the rest of the season. Wow. You don't get a better opportunity than that. What a shame for Pulpy and the Islanders. Chris Ditch back on the ice. It's a one-man power play for another 20 seconds. Walk along the near board, tipped out of the zone, on the Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky tugged at, protects the puck. Tries to hit the trailer, but it hit a skate instead. Chris Ditch, though, keeps it down low. Around to Gretzky. Sanders went through the slot. Coffee's got it. Penalty about to expire. But here come the Islanders. Seamock in over the line. Now to McCabe. The backhander missed on the glove side. The teams are at equal strength now. And Christich brings it to the line, only to be denied by Seamock. Mark for New York. Moving behind the next one. Tries to wrap around. It comes in front and is cleared by the Kings defense. So the Islander five on three fizzles. They had three shots total on their two power plays in that sequence. We stay tied at one. O'Donnell for the Kings up the middle to Troy Crowder. He's tripped up at the blue line and a penalty coming up. Now the Kings will go to the power play. Brian McCabe gets the stick between the forward's legs. Down he goes. Islanders, good opportunity. Three good chances on the two-man advantage. Couldn't pull the trigger. The best opportunity. Ziggy Palfy wide open net, and the puck bounces away from him. Kelly Rudy takes this chance to run over, get a little refreshment. Rick Green behind the... Let's take another look. There's Palfy. Wow, good picture here. The puck's going to come across. You won't see it, but here it comes. There it is on his stick. Misfires. Not only does he misfire, but look at the puck. is not that far away. Stop it and shoot it. He tried to one-time it off the heel of his stick. One, two, three. Every one of the penalty killers for the Los Angeles Kings standing in front of Kelly Rudy. Brian McCabe gets the ticket. And there's Rick Green. Nice job he did here with the Islanders, trying to help their young defense, and did. Now working with another defenseman, Larry Robinson, the head coach of Los Angeles. So the Kings to the power play for the second time. They failed 
to get even a shot on their first opportunity. Darryl Sador floats one to the net. Schneider broke it up, though. Kings have it back. Yari Curry. Checked by Sweeney. The puck comes out to center. Sweeney pulled down as he kicks it along. Play continues. Yannick Perro up to Siplikov. Over the Islander line. On to the left wing. Tockett. Gasparitis left his feet. But the Islanders get the puck back. Schneider twirls it around. Now Sidor pinches. Gasparitis poking away with Sweeney. And it's Sweeney carrying out with McKinnis. Now to McKinnis. And he's denied by the stick check of Curry. And the Kings come back. Tockett tried to play it towards the slot. Schneider broke it up and cleared. Los Angeles Kings, Howie, seventh best power play in the league. They're very good. Bentley with a drive off a giveaway. And Klon almost had the deflection on the rebound, but it winds up in the crowd. Fans yelling for a penalty to Kelly Rudy, who shot that puck over the glass, but a quick signal by the referee indicating that it had glanced off the glass and then into the seats. For the one-time Islander, now a, a Hollywooder. <laughs> How about that for a mask? Skyline of Hollywood. All the stars. Very creative. You'd think that the fans in Los Angeles would have considered Kelly Rudy a star when he about stood on his head to help the Kings get to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1993. I broadcast that series on radio for the National Hockey League, and I was amazed listening to the talk shows while I was out there how the fans would be critical of Rudy at the slightest hint of trouble. <laughs> I mean, they killed the poor guy. And all he did was take the team along, of course, with Wayne Gretzky and a couple of others on his back to an improbable, uh, improbable trip to the Stanley Cup Finals. Brent Severin with a clear for the Islanders with a half minute to go on the Los Angeles power play. Well, I suppose in Los Angeles they think that you should stop everything. The other team just never makes the play. Now, let's tell you what, listening to what some of the people had to say after those games in the Stanley Cup Finals, they don't know that they've still embraced even some of the most basic concepts of hockey out there. Awfully unfair. Renato carries in. Quick shot is kicked aside by Jamie McClennan. And then the rebound swept away. Closing seconds of the power play. Renato twirls it around the board. The Kings back on the ice. Teams are at equal strength. And now McKinnis with a lead for McCabe. McCabe had a step. Now pulls up on Cowie. And absorbs a mild hip check from the Kings defense. That was a good play by Cowie, though, Howie, because he played the body. McCabe had an opportunity to dance around him, and if he'd have played the puck, McCabe was on the other side with a scoring chance. Schneider behind the Islanders' net. Falling down in pursuit was Lacroix. Schneider finds Vakota along the right wing boards. And now he tries a left corner dump in. Jackie Berg back to smack it out of the zone. You see Schneider skip out of the way for a couple of reasons. Not wanting to make contact with a player. Get nailed for too many men on the ice penalty. Or get hit with a part of that door. Quick shot from the angle. Rudy stops that. Behind the net it remains. Centering feet comes out towards Gasparitis. But Conacher knocked it away. Good shot by Dan Quant. Beautiful move. Play in center. Up though comes Avazov. The clock, quick shot, and Rudy's got it in the breadbasket, and he holds on. The Islanders and the Kings are all even. Second period on the Modell scoreboard. In the second of back-to-backs on the West Coast last week, but wait a minute, Troy Crowder. And is that Brian McCabe, I believe? Yeah, Inside I... the Island, uh, Los Angeles blue line. I think, is that Aki Burr? No, no, it's not. It's... He's got an extra five on there. You're, you're right, it's Crowder. I think, yes, he did. He got a punch in at the beginning. You can see the effects of that. And it's a lot of people that ask, are the fights real? There's a great example of, yes, they are. Crowder got a couple in, I believe, right at the beginning of the fight. He tagged McCabe. McCabe fought back, and then he took another one in the same spot. Crowder's been around a bit in the National Hockey League, just played bits and pieces of six seasons in the league, and being a fighter and an enforcer has basically been his meal ticket. Brian McCabe has mixed it up a couple of times this year, but he hasn't come out bloody to the extent that he is right now. It's not so much that it hurts for Brian McCabe. It's a little embarrassing when you know you've got blood all over you, you've been in a fight, and uh, he's... 
going to get in. Ed Taberski going with them. Now, we mentioned the fact that Kasparitis had gone to the dressing room too, but he didn't go with Ed Taberski. There's Casper stopping, making a play. Oh, you see him trip? His right foot, I think he lost, I think he's lost an edge and he's gone in to get his skate sharpened. Crowder sitting in the penalty box. I don't, have they made the announcement as to what the penalties are? Or is it, they have not yet. Here they are. Five, Troy Crowder, Islanders penalty to number four, Brian McCabe. Five minutes each for fighting. The time of the penalties, 5.55. Just a straight five apiece at the 5.55 mark, fittingly enough, of the second period. So Crowder and McCabe will cool off. And Islander coach Mike Milbury and his adversary, at least last week in a more pronounced sense, Larry Robinson. Might have heard them take subtle jabs at each other on the pregame show. Puck just deflected over, but Wayne Gretzky had a marvelous night last week in the Forum in L.A. with six points and a 9-2 Kings win was still on the ice for the final shift of the game. And I know, Eddie, we were remarking after the game or even during the closing stages of that game that it could be considered somewhat unusual given the score that Gretzky would still be out there. And Milbury felt the same way and voiced that sentiment. But you have to remember something, uh, Howie, that Dmitry Kristic, you'd hit a crossbar, a goal post, and he had two goals and plays on the line, and you're always trying to get the hat trick for your team. Yachmanev in the same position on the same line. So really, the fact that Gretzky was out there was just probably more to help his teammates get a hat trick than it was to pile up more points, although what's wrong with that? Here's a drive sailing over the net, courtesy of Travis Green. It's hard to tell a thoroughbred to run at half speed. The puck cleared down by Tuckett of the Kings to the Islander line. So Larry Robinson's retort was, well, with the game no longer in doubt, Islander coach Mike Milbury had some of his heavyweights out there, physical type heavyweights, of course, to question what they could have been thinking about. Tuckett and Schneider hold each other off. Granado to the corner. Tony Granado to Curry in the slot. The shot hits escape. And Schneider plays it crisply to Palfi. Palfi gains the zone. Tried to skip around Cowie. And the puck cleared around by Rudy. Up now to the island of Blue Line. It's amazing. The, the head of a hockey player will tell you what's going on. When Cowie looked, he thought Palfi had beaten him. Alexander Simak. Plays it ahead. McSorley knocks it up for the Kings and feeds Cowie. But Seamock intercepts Cowie's pass. Out of Derek King. King with a drive off the stick of Rudy. Into the corner it goes. King looking for it. McSorley first to find it. Sweeney couldn't keep it. And sobaski has got it back in center. 12-10 to go, second period. 1-1 the score. Dean Chenault with a hard dump in. In for it is McSorley for the Kings. Hit by Flatley as the puck is sent into the Islander zone. Jamie McLennan, who has only had to face six shots, stopping five, works it around the board. Gretzky's got it back. Chanel on him. They left the puck behind the net, so Lacroix feeds Gretzky. But that pass broke it up, and McKinnis exchanges with Sweeney. Here's McKinnis to Flatley. One goes behind Sweeney, and Conacher curls in the Los Angeles zone. On to Burr. Aki Bird sends it rink wide. Played off the boards. Chipped away by Severin. Kings get it back, though. Bird to the slot. Flatley breaks it up. Sweeney can't clear. O'Donnell a shot. Knocked down in front by Schneider. Gretzky in the corner. Lost the puck. McKinnis lost his balance. Puck stays in the Islander zone. Worked along the board. Gretzky cues it to the far side. Severin and Lacroix bump hard. Conacher has the puck, looking for Gretzky. McKinnis steps in front. Separate and Lacroix, round two. Schneider throws his two cents in. And the Islanders have the puck. Flatley couldn't escape the O'Donnell stick check. McKinnis plays it back. And Islanders have to be careful changing. As the puck sits along the boards, the Kings carry out. Up tempo time in the hockey game. The bodies start to slam, and the game starts to pick up a pace. Just about at the halfway mark now of a 1-1 game. Todd Bertuzzi in neutral territory. Checked by Stephen Finn, who came over last week from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Exchange for veteran defenseman Michelle Petit. Now it's 
Bertuzzi unable to find that pass. Kevin Todd races after it. Todd takes a hit. King chips it to the line. But Granado gets it back. Now Chanel playing his ninth game this season. He's been used sparingly. Haven't heard that chant in a long time, Howie. Let's go, Islanders. Bertuzzi turns, shoots one. It's not rebound Bertuzzi. And Rudy throws his leg out at that. Now Yakmanev for the Kings back the other way to Siplikov. Leaves it back for Yakmanev, and he spews it behind the net. Real good crowd tonight here at the Nassau Coliseum. Not a sellout, but not miles away either. But here comes Yakmanev to Perro. Yannick Perro circles the net, tries to stop the Clinton stop. That is Brothers the rebound. Siplikov got a piece of the rebound of that wraparound attempt, but Jamie McLennan stops them both. It's been a struggle for Todd Bertuzzi. Hasn't scored a goal in his last 14 games. He hasn't had a point in his last six coming into play tonight. Alexander Sima takes the draw against Yari Curry, who's closing in on something of a milestone. Explain that in a moment. That pass between the legs of Bertuzzi, handled by Rudy. For Kelly and around now to Kristic. King intercepts. Persimov down low. Kristic stepped in front of him. Bertuzzi's got it back, but Rudy dives out to cover up. The interesting thing about Yari Curry is that he is closing in on a Mike Fossey mile post. Todd Bertuzzi is now, let's see, Bertuzzi's got two, and that's Yari Curry with a grand total as of now with 570 goals. So Bertuzzi's just 560 in a way, but Curry closing in on Mike Fossey, seventh place all times. A hat trick will do it for him. Now, I think we were in the same position, or he was in the same position, I should say, when, uh, when the teams last met. Just three back of Mike Fossey. But Bertuzzi, interestingly enough, while he hasn't put up a lot of numbers, Howie, he's still fourth in rookie scoring as far as assists are concerned. Just behind Alfredson and Yachmanev he's playing against right now. Chanel dumps it behind the net. Bertuzzi from behind gets the wraparound attempt of Rudy stops that. And we get a lot of pushing and shoving. Let me throw you a theory, Ed, that a couple of people who have played the game in the National Hockey League as well were offering last week in various conversations on the West Coast pertaining to Bertuzzi. Put a lot of energy emotionally into making the hockey club during training camp. And perhaps according to that theory, he said a little bit of an emotional wall, not necessarily a physical one, but all the excitement, all the energy yeah. about making the team. Maybe now that that's died down a little bit, he's found a little hard to regenerate. Do you buy that? I don't know that I would buy it that way. When you look when you look at him at 20 years of age, he's the kind of a player, well, you know, he comes in with some great credentials from junior hockey. He's still only 20 years of age. He has to learn how to play the game at a different level. And if you ask he and a lot of other players that come into this league, when they go from playing against boys to playing against men, it's a whole different game. And you have to do everything much quicker. And you're up against bodies out there that are a lot stronger than playing against 16, 17, 18, 19 year old teenagers. Here's one of the 18 year olds, Zachy Berg, number five for the Kings. Trying to clear out, couldn't do it, kept in by Avizov to plot in the corner. And plot number 21, in by Berg. Avizov helping out. Like Avizov, still with the puck. Snaps one, and that goes wide on the glove side. Chanel holds it in. His drive blocked by Kristich. And the Kings come out. Hunterzov got back to break that play up, but Curry comes back in. First to Granado, now to Kristich, but he centered right through the slot. Pardon me, that was Tocchet, number 22, rather than Granado, number 21 for the Kings. And now the puck cleared along by Vasky for New York, and McFakota tucks it behind the net. 8.13 to go, second period. 1-1 the score. Brent Severin in center with Schneider. You see Kasparitis on the bench? Has he come back yet? No. I think he has. There he is, Kasparitis, still in the Islander dressing room. You might have seen on that replay that he winced when he lost his balance behind the net. Three centers on and Rooney with high 
You wouldn't know that this is Kelly Rudy's first game of the 95-96 season. He's got his team even on the Modell scoreboard. It's Kasparitis back out on the ice. And this is he firing one that's knocked down in front. Flatley burning in the corner on Gretzky. Helping for the Kings, Granado. Double teamed, though so Schneider has the puck. Hails it to the net. Rudy picks that aside for Sador. Sador to Granado, and then Tony Granado backhands it into Islanders territory. Here's Kasparitis going right wide to Sweeney. Checked by Sador. The puck back into the Islander zone. Matthew Schneider cleans it off the boards. Flatley chipped it ahead. Sador's got it back. Flatley intercepts that pass. Patrick Flatley in over the line. Flatley hits it in in the corner by Finch. Rather aggressively. Puck whirled back around. And Gretzky takes over for Los Angeles. Soft pass up the middle. Schneider just stepped in front. Tony Granato roughs it up with Kasparitis. Casper got an extra shot, and Gretzky on the line. And McLennan may have gotten just a piece of that soft shot by Gretzky. All by himself in front of the Islander goal. McKinnis over the line to Flatley. Back to McKinnis, it went through his legs. McKinnis throws it in front. Schneider was in deep, and the Kings turn it back around. Green hustles back to cover the defense position. Kevin Todd with a good move and a shot that McLennan stops. Lacroix now behind the net. Working on Green. Down goes Lacroix. Conacher to the corner wins the puck. Pat Conacher to McSorley who jumps in and centers one right through the goal crease. Now he holds it in. Spins it behind the net. Todd and Baskey come together. Lacroix helps out. Gets the puck. Green on him. Lacroix exchanges with Todd. To the corner now to Conacher. Now the Kings cycling with Conacher. Rubbed out by Chanel. But the Kings get it back. Here's Cowie walking in. Shoots one. Oh, McLennan with a brilliant flip save to Rob Cowie. And the Islanders come back. Now Poppy is knocked down. And a penalty coming up. The Islanders will have a power play. So many mistakes made. And Jamie McLennan bails his hockey team out. He's got the fans on their feet. I guess so. Wow. What used to be an automatic goal in the Islanders net isn't automatic in this hockey game. During this break, true Islander fans will be taking to the ice. Bud Ice, the smooth taste that goes down easy. Bud Ice, the official beer sponsor of the National Hockey League. Let's take a look. The Islanders get caught napping. Look at all the players on the one side of the ice. My goodness. No wonder. Cowie's got nowhere to go but clear to the net. Taken away from him with a catching mitt of Jamie McLennan. McLennan makes him hold the ground. Let him make the first move. That's exactly what the goaltender's guide to good goaltending says. Tripping penalty to Conacher in the center ice area. 15-22, the time of the penalty, and Zygmunt Poppy has been the man fouled on all three penalties taken by the Kings. 14-22, you see the time of the penalty, and so the Islanders go to the power play. Bertuzzi in the corner, works it around to King at the far side. Eric King now spins the door as he holds the puck. King still with it. King's had it for about 10 seconds. The Seamock in the corner. Out to Vasky and then Schneider. Bertuzzi wallop behind the net. King knocked down by Finn. Bertuzzi plays it to Schneider. Duke Keith by Schneider. To Vasky. Now to Bertuzzi. Centers, but Seamock couldn't get a shot through. Schneider's got it back for Vasky. Seamock to Schneider again. The wrist shot deflection, and Rudy gets a piece of it as he sprawls. Finn clears the zone. The goaltending has been brilliant. The Islanders have outshot the Kings 22-9 overall. We're in a 1-1 tie with 55 seconds left to the Islander power play. Paskey is behind the net. Center and beat Clark, but that's knocked away at the defense. It's broken up by Yakmanev. And the puck cleared down the ice by the Kings. Good power play by the Islanders, Howie. They're moving the puck well. They should move their feet maybe just a little bit more. That would open up the kind of room in front of the net that they're not getting right now. Hoffie couldn't hold the pass. O'Donnell chases it for the Kings. Pinching is Casper. Right to belt McSorley. Islanders have the puck. 
screen to McKinnis, the drive and Rooney collects it and holds on. Good action here. What a hit by Kasparitis. You do not knock, knock Marty McSorley. There he is, a likable guy. But he is a very difficult guy to knock off his feet. He's built much like Kasparitis. Very solid on his skates and boom. I'm glad I wasn't standing between them. But McSorley in true fashion back on his feet very quickly. And then Marty McGinnis. Again, the Islanders, if there was anything wrong, they've had a good power play, but look where the shot is. First of all, Kelly Rudy gets a good look at it. Secondly, it's up high where Kelly Rudy can hang on to it. Get the thing down where he can't grab it. Look for rebounds. 16 seconds remain to the power play. Green, Clark, Palfi up front. McKinnis, Gasparitis are back. Actually, Palfi will probably drift back more towards a point position. McKinnis has the puck. McGinnis is playing far back towards the point, and the puck cleared out. Palfi has seen some time on the point this year. Penalty about to expire as Palfi accepts a two-line offside pass. Well, he did a pretty good job neutralizing Paul Correa. The game the Islanders lost. Three-tenths of a second to go in overtime. Sigmund Palfi just about deposited Sean O'Donnell into the Los Angeles Kings bench. Puck is out in center. Yari Curry hit by Kasparitis. They both go down. And it is a rather chipper and aggressive Kasparitis. He's taken a couple of Kings down in just the last two or three minutes. Dmitry Kristich over to the corner to get the puck. Green on him. Kristich couldn't get it past Kasparitis. And it's Darius unable to get that one through Curry, who centers. Tockett couldn't reach it. And it's chipped by Clark up to Palfi. Palfi pulls up, waits for help. Beats seven, he shoots one off the chest of Rudy. And Aki Burr comes back the other way. Severin was trapped as he carried deep. Palfi covering up. Curry feeds the net. Quick shot by Burr goes wide. Comes back out through the slot all the way to the point. Ziplikov behind the net. It's opened up here as Curry feeds one through the slot. Sidor pinches and puts it behind the net. Pocket hit by Baskey. Baskey trying to protect the puck. He gathered it in there. And he got away with one, at least from this angle where we are upstairs. He clearly gathered that puck in, but referee Dan Marowelli just closed the whistle, giving us a chance to visit with Stan Fischler, who's downstairs. Stan? Well, Howie, watching it from ice level, it tells me that Jamie McLennan is making a statement. He's telling his team, give me one more goal, and I'll win this hockey game for you. But still, so many defensive breakdowns, particularly a recent spate there when Dean Chenault was on the ice with uh, Moose Vasky. Uh, they can't afford to let these things happen. But so far, the Islanders are actually outplaying them. They just can't seem to get that extra goal. They obviously missed the forward that Kirk Muller would have been if he'd been on the ice. Take it away, Howie. All right. Darius Gasparitis has been awfully frisky tonight. I remember Moose Vasco. He played <laughs> yeah, Ken Dill. yeah, I was going to say. Gosh, reincarnated as Dennis Vasky, Moose Vasco, the great defenseman, the big wall of the Chicago Blackhawks. Chanel has lost his stick. That's him, number three, pinning Siplikov. Now Chanel reaches to pick his stick up. Yannick Perot puts it behind the net. Turning is Siplikov. Centers Perot. He was tied up. The pass didn't reach. Finn with a drive. That's tip. And it's Micah Avis up, looking to work it up the wall, and he does to Makota. Mick Makota for the Islanders. Comes it off the end boards. Plot hustles after it. And Plot gets to it behind the net. Plot being great, spun around, and dumped by Sidor. Play allowed to continue. Siplikov in over the line. Gave it away to Schneider. Turns it back up to Makota. With Plot, he hands off to Plot, who fans on the shot. Now McKinnis to the corner. Squeezed by Sidor. And the Kings have it back. Cowie in the King zone. The Siplikov on left wing with a minute and 12 to go in the second period of a 1-1 tie. Rick Tuckett is scheduled to join Stan downstairs during our second intermission. Matthew Schneider drives one and Rudy steers away. Kevin Todd hit by Kasparitis as soon as he plays the puck. 
in there as well. Sweeney for the Islanders. 55 seconds left in the second period. Tied at one. Sweeney's got the puck. Comes out of the corner. Now looking for some help. He twirls it around the boards. Now he's got that. Now he's pressured by Flatley. But the Kings get it out of the zone. And now Schneider has to chase with Todd in pursuit of him. Schneider works it up the boards, and it's chopped down the ice by Flatley with a half minute to go on the period. It's at this point, Howie, that the Islanders have to be smart. They can't just sit back and try and wear out the clock, which is a habit they've been getting into. Berg's pass couldn't be handled by Conacher, and so Sweeney sends McInnes in. Pulls up, slaps one, and that's knocked away by the blocker of Kelly Rudy. 12 seconds left in the period. Baskey puts it in front. Flatley stopped. Rebound by King. is stopped by Rudy. And he holds on. The Islander is unable to lift the puck over the prone Kelly Rudy as we get pushing and shoving behind the Los Angeles goal line. And there's McSorley with Derek King off to the right-hand side of your screen. Great chance for the Islanders. Just talk about the fact. Go for it. If you've got it in their end of the ice, see if you can't put one away. Alexander Cmac comes very close. Nice to see him get that mad that he went after one of the Los Angeles Kings. Yes, lots of things that are different in this hockey game. Up tempo has been for two periods. Derek King getting involved. Eye to eye with Marty McSorley. There's the play from the point. Down low. Now the puck is loose. Flatley couldn't get a hold of it. Derek King with a great chance. What a stop by Kelly Rudy. And then c -Mac in front of the net tries to loosen the puck up. Gets grabbed from behind. Pulled with a skate. Watch out with the skates, guys. Now c -Mac goes after whoever that is of the Los Angeles Kings. Kevin Todd, I believe. Down in the net. So a reversal here as the Islanders. Look at the stop by Kelly Rudy. Wow. Derek King, all he had to do, easy for me to say, lift the puck, put it along the ice. Kelly Rudy had his arm out there and snared it. You know who's had a good hockey game so far? For the first two periods, Ava's off. He's had a good shift each time he's been out on the ice. Todd and Seamock are going to go for roughing at the end of that scrum. And so four on four on ice manpower coming up. Well, the Kings have five guys on the ice right now, so somebody's going to have to skate off. Well, I'll tell you, once in this period, just about four or five minutes ago, the Islanders, again, I can't believe they do that. They're changing men. The puck is going in. Kevin Todd, I believe it was, was skating at the net, ready to shoot it, and two Islanders, a defenseman and a forward, were going off the ice. Everybody will head off in three seconds as the second period is about to draw to a close. And there's the horn. No scoring in the second period, but entertaining nonetheless. The Islanders have taken 27 shots through two periods. Uh, Kelly Rudy and have broken through just once. 16 to 4. Shots advantage in the second period for the Islanders. Kelly Rudy, the big story. Larry Robinson not happy about all the scoring chances. But the Islanders head off in a 1-1 tie at the end of two periods. What's your thoughts about the game? Well, you know, the Islanders are playing well. Uh, you know, it seems like a pattern for us. We're getting out shot every game. Our goaltending has been unbelievable. Uh, Kelly's great, playing great for us tonight. Brian Defoe and Jamie Storer. So, you know, Stan, I wish we could have some more shots. So we're... Uh, we're playing a little too defensive out there sometimes, and when you do that, uh, the other team gets a lot of chances, so we're going to have to maybe uh, play a little more aggressive in the third. After the, the last game, there was some ill feeling among the Islanders. They felt that you guys poured it on. You had a big lead. Gretzky was on in the last minute. Uh, what's your feeling about that? Well, you know, on any other time, I've been on the other, the other end losing 9-2, to two, and, you know, I'm one of the first guys that want to to do that, but, you know, we play four lines. Uh, you can see out there tonight, uh, you know, Gretz gets out there every fourth, fourth time, uh, you know, unless it's a power play. So, you know, I know uh, some guys were, uh, you know, uh, mad about it, but like I said, you know, you, we just roll the lines, go four lines, and whoever's up is up, and that's, you know, that's the answer to that. In the pregame show, we saw Larry Robinson in the Hall of Fame in Toronto. I was up there. He was very emotional. It was unlike anything I've ever seen in Larry Robinson. You've been with the guy as a coach. What kind of guy is he behind the bench? Well, you know, he's kind of funny. He uh, he doesn't really get too uptight. Uh, 
You know, uh, he's always laughing. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was laughing behind the bench when Marielli gave uh, gave us a penalty uh, when Palfi got dumped. He was laughing. He was laughing for five minutes. He's just one of those guys who's uh, who's uh, loves to come to the rink and have fun. You know, he doesn't get too serious about a lot of things. What was funny? What do you think he thought was funny? The call, the penalty. <laughs> It was ludicrous. Is that what he well, thought? Yeah, he I thought think, it was a dive. I think he thought it was a dive, yeah. I think he was diving on that one, too. I, gotta, I agree with Larry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks very much for coming. That was Rick Tucker. <laughs>a great one, Gilligan. We, we affectionately call Burles Gilligan for reasons you can probably figure out if you know him. And if you don't, you probably get a pretty good idea, too. But I said, that's a great stat, Gilligan. How many games has he played at the Coliseum since then? Gilligan's answer, and I quote, <laughs> one. <laughs> this is the second. Well, I mean, he missed a half season in 92-93 because of the herniated disc in his back. Missed a little time the season before that when his dad took ill. And then, um, of course, last year didn't come in because of the lockout, 93-94, which was the other season. The Kings were shut out 7 to nothing by the Islanders. So, yeah, technically, only the second point he scored in almost five years in this building. That was the assist on Granado's goal. And Gasparitis just took Wayne Gretzky out in neutral territory. And here's Travis Green firing, saves made, rebound, go! but he's very difficult to hit. He sees the ice so well. He knows where everybody is. Not only did he hit Kasparaitis, but he put the rebound in. Two to one lead, Kasparaitis. Here's the hit on Gretzky. Do you see Gretzky look up all of a sudden? Wham, there he was in his face. Look at him, get up. He's now heading for the net. Here comes the rebound, instinctively pounded high. Beautiful goal, Kasparaitis. The hit and the goal. Well, the first goal he ever scored in the NHL was against the Kings. It's only his sixth of his National Hockey League career. He is not a guy who gets on the score sheet via the goal or the assist very often at all. In fact, last year, which of course was a struggle for Kasparaitis the first month or so before he got hit or hurt when he injured his knee, pretty much the same thing. He had just one assist. There's another look at the goal of beauty by Kasparaitis. Look how closely Kelly Rudy came, came to getting it. Kasparaitis giving the Islanders a one-goal lead. There was a question, I believe, you saw the officials over to the office bench, something about the time, but it says 26 seconds into the second period. There is Kasparaitis from, they say, Travis Green. Given the Islanders a one goal lead. Green took the shot that Rudy kicked right out to where Gasparite was headed. And so the Islanders take a two to one lead. Remember, we're still in a four on four sequence here for another minute and 28 with Todd Seamock having gone off in the closing seconds of the second period. So the Islanders have the lead. Yannick Perro for the King. Up for Tuckett, too far. Gasparite stays with him. Pocket gets a good piece of Kasparaitis, too. Travis Green has the puck up now to Clark. Wendell Clark lost it at the line. Gets it back, though. Now Schneider to Clark at the near side. Green was knocked down in front, hustling with Cowan. Clark to Schneider. Perro got a stick on that. Green was taken down by McSorley, but regains the puck. Travis Green snaps one and hit Clark. Rudy lost his balance, was knocked into the net. He's back in position. McSorley carries out. McSorley working to center. The Islander line. Stick checked by Mike Gavazov. And that's back out at center. And a 20 gone of the third period. Another half minute to the four on four. Bad pass there from Bird. And now it's Vasky in the Islander zone. The thing they say is best about Aki Berg, the fact that he moves the puck so well. He didn't there. Islanders clear all the way down, and Berg gets back to touch up. 
icing call indicated against the Islanders. Well, they handle them very nicely. They don't use them in every hockey game, and in every hockey game, they don't use them a lot. They're just trying to let them, just let him work his way into the NHL. Only 18 years of age. He's very tall, rangy, still growing, but doing a nice job. Let's take a look at the MCI proof positive replay of the hockey game. What else? This hit on Wayne Gretzky. Unique? Yes. Not many people will catch Wayne Gretzky with his head down. And then what makes it even better as a replay, it's still going. He puts the puck in. A hit on Gretzky, a go-ahead goal. MCI proof positive replay. But now a defensive zone draw for the Islanders to worry about. Mike Avisoff is going to take it. He's out there with Zygmunt Palfi with 16 seconds left of the four on four. Kristich and Curry are the Kings forwards. Palfi over there in case they win the draw back to the left point. They want somebody there to pick it up. See Palfi challenging and he gets to the puck. Races to center. Palfi's going to challenge the defense. But he lost it to Berg. Mackey Berg gave it away to Palfi. Out from behind. He scores! any more ice time but make it with Zygmunt Palfi prowling around yes sir you've got a happy group here young and old and not so old as the Islanders quickly here at the beginning of the third period here's Berg now he drops the puck back and he didn't look he drops it look at this backhand shot into the top right hand corner oh, beauty yes and Ed, you set it up perfectly off of the face-off because when they moved Palfi over, the draw came back towards the point, but it fluttered back. Palfi was able to use his speed to get to the puck, challenge the defense, and ultimately finish the play. Three to one Islanders, two Islander goals within a minute and 25 seconds, both during the four-on-four -four sequence, which just concluded. And the Islanders look for more now as Flatley drives one to the corner. McKinnis to Sweeney. He's checked there, Flatley jumps in. Trying to gain control, he does. Floats it to the net, Rudy. It's a quick whistle from referee Dan Marawelli. And it's first Sweeney. And Lacroix, I believe that was. Or was that Pitt? In any event, we get a further pile up that the linesman, Ron Asseltine and Mark Parry separate. So to get you caught up on the scoring, Kasparitis with his first from Green at 26 seconds. Followed by Palfi unassisted, his sixth at a minute 51. And the Islanders, who have played arguably their best game of the year, although, listen, there have been some defensive zone breakdowns, but they've outshot the Kings 31 to 9. They now lead it 3 to 1. And it's going to be very interesting now, Ed, in the last 1735. That's, of course, a lot of time against a potentially explosive Kings team <laughs> yeah. to see what the Islanders' demeanor is defensively. Well, you've got to ride the wave you're sitting on right now, Sweeney heading in. We're heading for the penalty box. Finn, I believe, yes, from Los Angeles. Sweeney didn't look like he was ready. Finn attacked him and knocked him over backwards as you get a look at Wayne Gretzky. There's an interesting point I'd like to make as we get a good look at, uh, at Wayne Gretzky. Uh, doing a lot of playoff games, other than Islander playoff games, gave me some advantage. You talked about uh, playoffs you've done. What Wayne Gretzky does in the playoffs, or what the team does with Wayne Gretzky, is we were talking a lot of our theme leading up to this hockey game and during is changing on the fly, quick changes. Wayne Gretzky, in playoff hockey games, he's the first forward. When he's on the bench, and anybody, whether it be a winger or a centerman, he goes on the ice immediately. It's not right winger on right winger, which we were talking about before. It's the only time in 35 years that I've either played or watched hockey that I've seen that happen, but he does it in the playoffs. Just, First, just to maximize his ice time? That's right, to get him on the ice, right, immediately. Coincidental minors were called on Finn and Sweeney for a high sticking at 225, and so the teams once again are playing at four side. And that was a very good situation for the Islanders in the early part of the second period when they scored two goals within a minute 25 to take the 3-1 lead that they hold now. Marty McKinnis challenges Cowley. McKinnis goes wide, center, Snyder, score! Now at the crossbar! The crowd thought it was 
comes in. A couple of players raise their sticks. We may get a video review, but play continues. Here's Cowie centering one right through the goal crease. Crowd still buzzing about that. Now, can you imagine if that goal is going to count in the uh, L.A. Kings score in the meantime? <laughs> that would all be negated because of the video replay rule. Well, if it, if it counts. Yeah, time can stand still in the National Hockey League. Matthew Schneider twirls it around the boards. That, of course, is assuming we get a video replay, and I'm sure we will. And what we're talking about, while we have a second to elaborate, is if it's ruled that the goal was scored by the Islanders, should the Kings score here, that goal, as well as all of the time that would have elapsed since the proposed Islander goal, would be wiped off the boards. That's how you make time stand still in this game. Travis Green over the line. Check there. And Perro works it back down the ice. And icing if Baskey wins the race, and he does. Let's take a look at your Odell scoreboard. Booth, was it in, was it not in? And here, you watch it. Off the crossbar, Rayward meets the goal post. Off the other post, I thought it might have gone in. But once it hits both posts, it can't. Whoa, that angle looks like it is. Wow, if we could get another look at that angle. It does look like it. Let's take another look. There's the shot. It'll go rising. Boom. Up in the net. Boy, does that look like it hit in the back of the net. And that's more like the angle we have from here facing the net. It, it, I think it's just the way that the net was with the camera moving and the puck. It looked like the puck touched the back of the net. In any event, 3-1 Islanders. But they look for more with McCabe carrying in. Leaves it behind the net. Berg overskated. Park centers. It hit the stick. Of Kelly Rudy. Green was knocked down and lost his stick. He's behind the play now. Stick checked by Baske at the line, brought it out, but O'Donnell carries back in and his shot flicks off the stick and into the crowd. 31 to 9. The shot's advantage for the Islanders. Kelly Rudy has been brilliant in goal. Wayne Gretzky has an assist on the Los Angeles goal, which was scored by Tony Granato. And let's see where number 99 sits among the Chrysler league leaders. Eight points off the pace set by Mario Lemieux, which is a remarkable story in itself. And that is as of this very instant, including Gretzky's assist in this game and assists by Lemieux and Francis in the Penguins game against the New York Rangers in Pittsburgh. Should, should, also, should also point out that Wayne Gretzky leads the NHL with 28 assists. Got to give Marty McKinnis credit tonight because he has been around Gretzky as often as possible. Kevin Todd walks in and Jamie McClinton with a rare business opportunity tonight grabs the puck. Only the tenth shot for the Los Angeles Kings and this is largely indicative of their play. Look at the former devil, current king. But Islander goaltender Jamie McLennan has had a quiet night at the other end. King's goaltenders have faced an average of about 38 shots per night. Yeah. Here's another one that Rudy looked at, did not get, but had help from the goalpost. That's the one that proof is the proof positive, whether it's the MCI proof positive replay or not. That tells you it did not go in beyond the goalpost of the crossbar. We have no shame. We'll plug them as often as we can during the game. Kevin Todd behind the net for the King. Worked over by Severin. Todd holding on, looking for help. Trying to bounce off. Good work to keep his legs churning. He's got the puck, but he's unable to connect with a teammate. Testament to the Islander defensive coverage there. Curry to Todd. The Chris Ditch, and he sails it wide. Cowie couldn't hold it. Yari Curry does. Flips it to the corner. Todd unable to get it. And now falling, losing the puck, is Avazov. So here's Curry whirling along the boards. Yari Curry for Todd. Christich behind the net, wiped out by McKay. And so Avazov shoots it all the way down, and the Islanders will take an icing here as Cowie comes back to touch up. It's a good call, Howie, and the reason it's a good call. I mean, the other night he'd love to have the timeout in the overtime, possibly, to maybe give some of his players, key players, an extra breather. But since since the Islanders hit the crossbar and the goalpost in one shot, the L.A. Kings have been in the Islanders' end of the ice. They've been milling around for two shifts. They've had the Islanders hemmed in. He wants to remind the guys, look, fellas, remember what we talked about. Remember how we, of course, you know, the one thing you have to also remember is he's telling the guys, 
you know, don't sit back and try and hold on to a two-goal lead against this hockey club. They haven't played with a lead too often, particularly a two-goal lead. Going back to Montreal, I think, when they beat them two to nothing yep. here at this building. And the game against the San Jose Sharks, the Islanders would wind up winning that game five to three, which was their last win. Uh, those there's last a, two goals came late. There's a shots on goal uh, in this hockey game so far. The 10, they've only had one so far. That's the Los Angeles Kings. And the Islanders had 27 coming in. So they've had four in the third period so far. Marius Kasparaitis, number 11 for the Islanders, who's played a very effective game tonight, aside from the giveaway to Gretzky, which led to the King goal. And the puck in his own end. King shot wide, and the Islanders dump out. Tony Granato, who scored that goal. Out there now with Gretzky and Yakmanev. It's been a constant lately for the Kings. They ice the puck, the Kings do. Matthew Schneider back to touch up. The shift after the goal really didn't see much ice time the rest of the first period. None in the second and third and responding with a strong game tonight. It's always refreshing to hear a hockey player openly admit without making any kind of excuses. Just come out and say, yeah, I, I, I made a big mistake. It cost us that goal and, uh, and I shouldn't have, obviously. Oh, no. over behind the net, but Baski wallop. And help immediately comes. You see Bertuzzi in there. Cern, though, is for Baskin. Oh, wow. They're asking immediately. Just hoping he's moving his feet and the rest of them. My goodness. Somebody help the doctor get over there. What a sucker shot that was. I mean, that is just absolutely one of the worst things that you can see happen in this game today when, when players are supposed to have at least some kind of respect for each other. Well, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see the hit because I was following the puck, which was on the other side of the area behind the net. You're not the only one that didn't see it. You can hear the La thud Croix. here. I believe it was Lacroix. Vasky facing the boards just got buried. And, and I, you know, it's just, it's hard to be objective when you have the feeling Vasky is laying face down. I saw him moving a little bit, his feet. And I just think back to that young Boston College player, Boston University player, Roy, that, that, is Roy, yeah. that has been paralyzed from the neck down from not, not really, not really that kind of a hit if you saw it on television. He's moving his legs, which is a good sign. Dean Chenault has gone to the Islanders dressing room. He, he buried Lacroix immediately. But you have to, you have to kind of watch for faces, I suppose, and expressions. There seems like a lot of yeah. blood on the ice. Yep. Uh, is, is he in a crouched position now? Well, I saw him move his legs yeah. a couple of times. And okay. I don't know. Yeah, you see the players yeah, pat him on the backside. Good signal. Not so good as far as what, what he may end up with, but the fact that he is in that position and not, not laying where he was face down. Uh, there isn't there isn't any room. I don't care. They're just that player. That player should 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 be reprimanded to the severest degree. I don't. I think back to the time that Dale Hunter and Terjean hit, hit Terjean, and it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything close to that. It were, there was a lot more made out of it because of the fact it was in a, under different circumstances. But but the hit on Terjean was nothing close to that. And that was a 21-gamer. Well, obviously, Dennis Vasky is conscious, although severely shaken by the hit from Eric Lacroix. You see the stretcher that was brought out. Jamie McLennan. That's a precautionary measure, I yeah. would guess, that if he's in that position, it, if he doesn't respond, it, I know Stan Fischler is down. He's a lot closer to all that than we are. Stan? Well, Eddie, I'm right at the glass, and there is a huge wad, a blood-soaked wad that's being held right over the uh, left eye of Vasky. Uh, one of the doctors, Simonson, asked, uh, asked Vasky if he could 
move his hand back and forth. And there was also some question about whether or not they would use the uh, stretcher. They're bringing the stretcher over right now. And uh, the terrible thing from this viewpoint is all the blood on that uh, wad of cotton. Uh, but they're bringing the uh, stretcher over right now. And obviously, they're going to uh, use it. I'm trying to get a look at uh, his face, but I can't because the doctor is uh, in front of me. I'll try to uh, get a, a better view of it. They're laying him down now. Stan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. OK, I've, I see where you are, and you're directly behind, for those who can't see Stan, where Dennis Vasquez is being helped onto the stretcher right now. Did you have a vantage point anywhere near that to determine whether or not he was absolutely unconscious for a stretch of time? Uh, I couldn't see because, but I'm told that it's a huge gash that's uh, over the uh, the eye, uh, and, uh, and obviously uh, a lot of blood here. Uh, the, the best case, of course, is that it's simply a very severe cut and uh, nothing worse than that, but obviously they're gonna have to take him for observation, and the fact that they use the uh, stretcher makes it a pretty uh, serious situation, Howie. Can you yeah, see exactly? Stan, I, excuse me, Howie. Stan, I can't tell from here because of the body. Does, I, does he have a collar on at all? No, he hasn't. I don't see any collar. All right, the Islanders have a 3-1 to one lead with 13-24 remaining in the third period. A major penalty, of course, in the game misconduct being assessed to Eric Lacroix. We'll pause. There's your Modell scoreboard. About his back to everything. I mean, wow. Look at Dean Chanel go after him, after Lacroix. There. There is no way. There's, look, I hit on the top of the boards. I mean, it's just so ugly. That is absolutely, absolutely unforgivable. That player could have avoided that altogether. Well, it's a five minute checking from behind penalty and game misconduct to Lacroix. Chenault was the first to get to Lacroix. He got two for roughing and a game misconduct. So they're playing for the time being at four on four. And eventually a three minute power play for the Islanders who lead the game three to one. That almost seems trivial at the moment. Wendell Clark with a wraparound attempt. Rudy's got that. I'm sure we'll have somebody that'll get as close as they can or into the dressing room and we'll pass along any information that we get when we get it as Wendell Clark gets a good scoring chance. Wrap around attempt. Must be a much nicer feeling for Mike Milbury. Uh, just 13 minutes remaining in the hockey game. A lot of a lot can happen yet. And uh, but to, to be able to have the home crowd into the hockey game. Was, of course, it's been dull since Dennis Vasky got hit from behind. It'll be interesting to watch and see what the reaction is by both teams. Well, if Mike Milbury's immediate reaction was to fear the worst on the Vasky hit, it's understandable for a couple of reasons. First off, everybody in the building, no doubt, thought, uh-oh, are we looking at a Dennis Bird or a Travis Roy type situation when Vasky went down? I'm sure you know who Bird is, the former New York Jet. But Travis Roy, who was playing his first shift as a Boston University hockey player earlier this year, suffered a paralyzing injury when he was hit. And of course, as of now, remains paralyzed from the neck down. The irony of the situation from Milbury's, Milbury's standpoint, as McCabe drives one wide, is that when Mike Milbury was behind the bench of the Boston Bruins, Travis Green was his stick boy. Travis Let's say Roy. Travis Green. I'm yeah. sorry, Travis Roy. Yeah, and that was when he was up in Maine. One just before Milbury became the Bruins coach, he was coaching Maine, and uh, and Roy was his stick boy there. Scott Lachance of BU Alum, of the New York Islanders, is going to be involved in an autograph signing session within the next couple of days, and the proceeds from that signing session are going to go to the Travis Roy Fund. So it's. A situation that has touched not only Mike Milbury, but the entire Islanders organization. And now the worst fears, at least, appear to have been allayed concerning Dennis Vasquez, because he was moving when they put him onto the stretcher, or at least he had movement in his legs. You saw that. At first glance, it appears to be a severe cut with the force with which his head hit the boards. Perhaps a concussion, but we'll leave that to the doctors. 
Ekmanev on for the Kings, sliding one through the slot. Put deep once again by Cowie with 10.49 to go, and now it's an Islander power play. A major power play. That, of course, with Eric Lacroix out for the game from that check from behind on Vasky. So the Islanders with a two-goal lead and a man advantage for another 2-10. If they score, they can keep on scoring for the remainder of the 2-10. As many as you can get on a major power play. But here's McSorley getting one around Green. McSorley drives. He's in for a shot. McClennan stops it, and Palfi clears it. Jamie McLennan hasn't seen a whole lot of rubber, but he's been sharp. With 45 to go to the Islander power play. McCabe puts it into the corner. Finn slams it off the board. Severin check. And here's Kristen. And you, you know, you almost hate to trivialize the injury to Vasky, but you do have to put it in some sort of context regarding the game. Are the Islanders stunned and shaken to the point where it's affecting this power play? I don't think so. Clark behind the net. Clark centers. Knocked away. Clark knocked down. Now Bertuzzi trying to help. Todd steps in front to poke it to the line. Severin couldn't hold it in. And here come the Kings again. Kristich tried to take the overland route. And Kristich should get the penalty here. Got frustrated with Kasparitis. And Dmitry Kristich is going to go off for the hold. And the Islanders are going to have a two-man power play for the second time tonight. This for a minute seven. Well, it almost answers your question when you see Kristich do what he did. You know, you were asking about whether it's frustrating the Islanders on their mind. But what's more on the mind right now is the Los Angeles Kings and their frustration being down three to one. And you know, I tell you, what creeps into the minds of a lot of players, particularly on the Los Angeles Kings side, and I'm sure Dmitry Kristich as well, they're rather embarrassed. You get embarrassed when your teammate does something like that in a hockey game that's absolutely unforgivable. And it affects the team because they just as soon it didn't happen, it went away. And you'll hear them make all kinds of statements. Well, he was turned sideways, and they'll make all of these inane observations that, that don't count. When we get a minute, tell us how it affects the team in the aftermath, meaning after the game, are there words exchanged? McKinnis to Schneider. Two-man power play for the Islanders. Eric King out for Schneider. 45 seconds to the two-man advantage. King, quick shot. Rudy got it with his chest. King's got it back, though. Out for Schneider. His drive, kick, save, Rudy, and Conacher clears. Good stop by Kelly Rudy. Good clear by the penalty killers of Los Angeles. Half minute to the five on three. Minute 20 to the power play overall. Alexander Simak to Schneider. Out now to McKinnis. Schneider again. Sima to McKinnis. Now to Sima. Score! Gorgeous puck movement. It's 4-1 to New York. Most importantly for the Islanders as they get to celebrate with their fans. Talk about the patience of some coaches. I suppose Larry Robinson. That's what his team talks about, the patience. But the Islanders have great patience in this power play. They weren't trying to get the first one in the first minute. They moved the puck well. They were playing it around on the perimeters. Look at the beautiful passing play. Alexander Cimac to Marty McGinnis returned, and Cimac put it away. And the Islanders have a 4-1 to one lead. They still have 15 seconds of power play time, but they made, they made part of the payment back. Ryan McCabe drills it around the boards. The Islanders with a three-goal lead. I think that's the first time this year they've had a three-goal lead, isn't it? Seamock getting the goal on the power play. And now the Kings back on the puck in their own end. The team's now at equal strength. And it's Severin from the red line throwing it in deep. Eight minutes to go in the third period. Severin at the right point. Seamock along the board. Now to Bertuzzi who steps up and shoots one that deflects over the net. And is slammed past McCabe. And down the ice. And this could be an icing, but that takes care of that as McLennan feels forced to play the puck. McCabe fans. Bound around. Clark back to get it. Wendell Clark pushes it out to center. So 
For the Islander goal, Seamount St. from McGinnis and Schneider on the power play at 11 21. Make it 4 1 Islanders. Cockett gave it away to Palfi, who chips it out of the zone. Well, the crowd back into it now after that goal. And again, if you're just joining us, I say back into it, not because the Islanders had sagged, but because Dennis Vasky had been drilled and seriously hurt from behind. Wendell Clark with a shot off the glass behind the net. No further word on Vasky's condition. He was carried out on a stretcher, although he did have movement in his legs, presumably his arms. You saw the legs move a bit. See the pursuit by Marty McGinnis on Wayne Gretzky. McGinnis skated from one end to the other, caught. He caught Gretzky at the center ice area and poke checked the way, the puck away. Here's Gretzky again. Shadowed by McGinnis, peels off. Backs up to the Islander line while Siplikov carries in and shoots one off the arm of McLennan. And a souvenir for the crowd here at the Nassau Coliseum. New York, Sidor's drive, blocked by plot. Sidor has it back to Perot and now to Crowder. Crowder knocked the stick out of Avazov's hands, but the Islanders get it ahead anyway, and Dan Plott dribbles it in over the Los Angeles line. Here's Perot to the red line, slamming one straight through, stopped by McLennan. And Gasparitis plays it to the point inadvertently. Sidor holds it in, steps up and misses the net on the glove side. And it comes hard around. Steve Finn handles the puck in the L.A. zone to Sidor. Quickly to Perro, tucked that by Gasparitis. Sent to the line, Sidor holds it in. His drive sails wide. Now he keeps it in. Puts it through the slot into the corner to Perro. Right up by Gasparitis. And recovered by Siplikov. Siplikov pulled down and a penalty coming up to Simak. The Kings will go to the power play. Alexander Simak gets the tripping penalty. Islanders get in trouble in their own end of the ice, not finishing their checks. Remember when Mike Milbury took his time out, they started to finish the checks. Kasparitis missed a couple of along the boards there, didn't finish the check. Islanders will get up into a two-on-one situation again. Simak for tripping at 14-28. We saw it's been a while since the Islanders enjoyed a three-goal lead. Kevin Todd out to McSorley. The drive is stopped by McLennan off a deflection. Deflection came from up high. Curry to Todd. Kevin Todd looking for a play. Down low, Curry deflected it over the net. McSorley jumps in to shovel it around the board. Todd for Curry now. Curry, Curry chased by McCabe. Curry does some stick handling. Along the goal line, it's Todd. Severin went down. The pass came through. McSorley couldn't reach it. Christich has the puck. And Gretzky not on the ice here. Todd tried to put it in front. That's knocked away. Severin with a big hit on Todd. Sweeney behind the net. McLennan tried to play it. Christich did for the Kings. Uh, no connection made by a King. And Bob Sweeney spins it around. McSorley made the pinch. Todd to Cowie, and he drilled it wide. Now it's McCabe on the backhand, and he plays it down the ice with 55 seconds up to the Kings' power play. Gretzky's out there now. This is Curry, number 17 for the Kings. Gaining the Islander zone to Cowie, who moves up and fires, and McLennan squeezes it at the crest and holds on. Jamie McLennan staying back in the net. Cowie impressed me a couple of times in this hockey game, Howie, because he shoots the puck so well. One timing it from the blue line, not but moments ago. He put it over the net, but boy, did he have a snap on it. That time, from a little closer, Jamie McLennan getting a good look at it, picking it off. He was signed as a free agent, Cowie, 28 years old now. He's probably signed back in July. They love his work ethic. Here's Gretzky, top of the circle, putting it in front. Granado chips at it and it ends up behind the net. Cock it to Gretzky. Half minute to the power play. Gretzky to Granado. He scores. Second of the game for Granado. Comes on the power play and it's now 4-2 to New York. Well, the Islanders, you know, they're not out of the woods. He knows that, too. You're not going to be able to sit back. We talked about that once before when the Islanders got the 2-1 lead earlier in the period you can't wait you got to keep going got to get down play the game the way you played it to get the first four goals but Gretzky handling the puck turning little flip pass and Tony Granato 
found the spot between the feet of Jamie McLennan. And it's a 4-2 hockey game. Good puck handling by Tony Granato. You know one of the things that he's benefited by? He used to take a lot of bad penalties, Tony Granato. He doesn't take them anymore. He was telling me before the game, he had to stop doing that. Ice time is so valuable anymore. Wants to accomplish a lot. Wants to win a Stanley Cup. Said, I just took a lot of bad penalties. I'm not taking them anymore. Especially when you're playing with Wayne Gretzky. I think you'd want to maximize that ice time because you can maximize your output offensively as Granato did there. Second of the night for Tony Granato. Coming on the power play from Gretzky and Tuckett at 15 58 nine goals now this year for Tony Granato and still with 354 to go some understandable consternation on the Islanders bench. And again good news on Dennis Vasky comes to us. The first piece of good news was that he was moving his legs when they took him off. We're told now that he is conscious. He's been taken to the hospital for observation. So if we get any further word on his condition from the hospital we'll let you know. Well, we did hear before that his wife had been given some news by the doctor, I guess a very preliminary report, and she smiled, and if she's smiling, it's got to be good news for anyone concerned about the condition of Dennis Vasquez. Roy Crowder operating behind the Islander net, puts it in front. Here's a chance that's smothered in front by Kasparaitis on Siplikov, but it squirts free anyhow. Sador tied up by Clark. Wendell Clark races. He's got help from Green. Clark tried to pull up, knocked down, and the Kings come the other way. The Islanders were changing. Sador for Crowder. And you get it through McCabe. And back on it is Severin with the Kings now. The other side of the ice. His blast sails wide on the stick side. McKinnis on it. He drives one stop by Rudy. Severin pushes it towards Flatley. Patrick Flatley in the corner. Working the wall. Peels off and centers one for the breaking Sweeney. But it floated wide. And the Kings come to center. Dimitri Christich couldn't find the handle. McKay puts it to the crowd with 2.36 to go in the third period. Well, the Islanders in jeopardy of losing everything they've gained through two-plus periods, and they could see them all of a sudden pick up the pace. A good hit by Wendell Clark. Get a look at Brian McCabe. Sweeney. Some of the... Actually, when you're at 2.36, you know, the mistake that the Islanders would make here, and I'm sure they're talking to each other, the coaches are reminding them, win the draw, take it down, put it in, get in and forecheck. Even if you just send one, one, two, two, one forecheck, one forechecker, excuse me, in deep, and the other two pick up the wings. Let the defense stand up. Two and a half to go, four to two Islanders. Kings look for more. Kristich out for Cowie. Now to McSorley. Shovels one to the slot. Yakmanev couldn't get it to relax. And pulled down in center is Avizov. A bad penalty, I think, by Kristich. Was off the puck. And he just tucked down Micah Avizov. And that's a killer for the Kings with 2.16 to go in the third period. Is it ever, Howie? But I talked about Avizov earlier in this hockey game. He has not had a bad shift. Avizov has played himself... A fine hockey game. And the reason he, they're still using him is because he played well when they brought him up, when they were on the West Coast trip. He used his hand there. A lot of young players wouldn't have done that. They'd have tried to kick it ahead, tried to use their stick, missed it, and the play would have ended up in the Islanders' end. He was smart enough to use his hand, accelerate through the center ice area, and was pulled down from behind. Christich taking the hooking penalty. Everybody breathing a little easier in the building as far as the supporters of the Islanders are concerned. And I'm sure that the coaching staff, Larry Robinson, wants to get as much offense on the ice, even though they're shorthanded. And the Islanders, they want to play in the offensive zone for the next two minutes. Well, the Kings are on a five-game road trip. This is the second of that five that lost last night in Philadelphia. And they're in danger now of dropping the first two as the Islanders have two minutes to... Run off the clock with a 4-2 lead. King to Ivazov getting power play time. Try to get it back to King. It deflected away. Bertuzzi behind the net. Bertuzzi tries to stuff her. But Rudy got a piece of it. Ivazov back for Schneider. Again to Ivazov. Schneider for the drive. Rudy's got it. But King buries the rebound. 5-2 Islanders. Oh, hey. 
Davidoff helped set up this play. There he is along the boards, a little backhand pass. Beautiful sh shot by Schneider. The rebound on the king stick. And wham, into the top of the net. Everybody's feeling good in the building. Islander players, Islander fans, coaching staff. Hard shot. I think that hit King, and he buried it off his leg into the top of the net. Three goal lead retained by the Islanders. Derek King, his first goal since the 2 to nothing win over Montreal on the 28th of October. Schneider and Avizov on the assists at 18-21, and here we go again. Rick Tockett went after a couple of the Islanders, pushed one over backwards, and then started punching another one. Marty McSorley is just circling the net, presumably looking for a player to, at the very least, latch on to. Asperitis had something to say. Only hope that the cooler of the heads will prevail. McSorley pushing and shoving with McSweeney. I mean with Sweeney. Matt Schneider just dropping his jersey to the ice now. Well, it was partway off anyway. He was uh, he was attacked by Tockett. The question I was going to raise is that I wonder if if at some point near the end of the game, if the Islanders got a face-off in the offensive zone, would Milbury pull the goaltender to see if they couldn't? <laughs> well, that would be in response to something he perceived that Harry Robinson was doing. Although, if I remember right, Robinson did it at the end of, what, the first second, or second, second period, period right? Second yeah. period. The score was 6-2, to two and there was two seconds remaining. Now, Tockett's going to try and explain to the linesman that he was, he was attacked. <laughs> Let me uh, draw on the point that I started to make before, and that had to do with the fact that you'd mentioned how even the players on the Los Angeles Kings in this instance, or just generally speaking, teammates of a guy who puts on a hit like Lacroix did, which is unacceptable by any standards, you say that has them embarrassed as well. Are there any manifestations of that as a rule? Will they be uh, talking to him, or does yes. it affect him? No. In his it's one of the... It's unfortunate, but being a member of the team, guys will tell them that it's okay. And they will make up all of these different reasons why it's okay. Well, that's for the public. No, no, no. Right? This is for him. Oh, no, no, no. This is for him. They'll be saying, he'll be feeling bad about it in the dressing room because in every hockey player, even some of the worst, there's always a, a mark of decency somewhere, and you'll find it if you work on it. But the players will try to console them. And they will try to tell them. And then they'll all build around. They'll hear the stories going on and on. And when they're confronted by the media, they'll have had those in their minds rehearsed as to how they're going to talk about it. Nobody from the Los Angeles Kings is going to step up and say, it was the worst thing I've seen in years or anything like that. Let's take a look at Los Angeles coming into the offensive zone. Talk it. Talk it there. Talk it after Casper again. Schneider comes in, jumps in, tries to protect his downed teammate, and then talk it after Schneider. I don't know whether he got a punch in or not. That's what they're sorting out now. McSorley is having it sorted out for him. A minute 25 remains to the third period. The Islanders now comfortably in front, 5-2. to two. The last goal was King second on the power play from Schneider and Micah Avizov at 18-21. So the Islanders have a four-goal period. He's not smiling right there. Well, he almost cracked one, but Mike Milbury has to be happy with a four-goal period. Only the second time this season that's happened for the Islanders. And Larry Robinson, obviously, dismayed by the situation. Rick Tockett took his glove off. He took it off quickly. It went up into the seat. Somebody threw it back. The major goes to Kasparitis. Five for high sticking in a game misconduct. Schneider a game misconduct. Taka two for roughing at 18.35. Four on four manpower situation results. McSorley shanked that shot. Green. Leads McKinnis. Broken up in center. We've got one minute to go in the third period. Played to the Islander blue line. McCabe has it there. 
And the New York Islanders are now 50 seconds away from only their fourth win of the year. Their second here at the Nassau Coliseum. And this clearly their best 60-minute effort of the season. Marty McKinnis. And even more impressive when you consider how badly they were trounced in Los Angeles last week. Severin to the red line. Gets the puck deep. Kings took 41 shots at the Islanders that night. They have only 18 now. And the crowd now rises in appreciation with 25 seconds to go. Islanders will be back at the Coliseum on Saturday against Tampa Bay, who beat New Jersey tonight in St. Petersburg. The Islanders will be in Buffalo on Friday night. Final 14 seconds. Offside pass called across two lines. And the crowd, and it was an enthusiastic and very large crowd right from the outset tonight, gives the Islanders a round of applause, which will be intensified in the next 12.6 playing seconds. What a confidence builder for the Islanders, and it's more important for them, I mean, one, to enjoy it now, and particularly tomorrow with their families, friends, as they celebrate our Thanksgiving Day. But then to build off of that, nothing like winning to build confidence and bring a team close together. Buck just sits in the Los Angeles zone as time runs out. Put it in the books. Two points for the Islanders. As they come off the bench to congratulate Jamie McLennan, who has helped his team to a 5-2 win over the Los Angeles Kings tonight here at the Nassau Coliseum. Coliseum, the Islanders defeat the Los Angeles Kings 5-2. Ed, what's our Nissan turning point of the game? Oh, I got an easy one here. That was the hit by Casparitis. Beauty on Wayne Gretzky in the center ice area, and he wasn't finished yet, folks. The score was 1-1 when all this was happening, and there goes Darius striding towards the net, and guess what happens? Yep, 2-1. to one. He put the Islanders ahead with that. That's the Nissan turning point of the hockey game. He doesn't get a lot of them, but that's the one that put the Islanders ahead to stay. Again, some concern for Dennis Vasky, who appeared seriously injured, taking a hit from Eric Lacroix behind the net. However, he left the ice conscious. He has gone to the hospital for observation, and the first signs seem pretty positive. 5-2 Islanders tonight. Let's send you back to Matt in our game time studio. adjustable bed. Why is Craftmatic making this rebate offer? It's our way of saying thanks for taking the time to find out about Craftmatic. There is, of course, absolutely no obligation for calling toll-free and requesting this helpful information kit. So if you have any interest in adjustable beds, pick up your phone and call now. Call toll-free 1-800-352-2300. That's 1-800-352-2300. Toll-free 1-800-352-2300. You have two sides. Your emotional side would love a cellular phone to stay in touch with family, friends, and tow trucks. Your rational side says, no way, we can't afford it. Well, look at this, both of you. It's Talk Along Cellular Service from Bell Atlantic 9X Mobile. It's just $14.99 a month. You get free local weekend airtime, a Nokia phone for $39.99, plus call now with your credit card and there's no activation fee. Get yourself together. Call for Talk Along now, only from Bell Atlantic 9X Mobile. They say, surround yourself with Earth's forms and you'll find tranquility. In the presence of power, Achieve peace of mind. Remove yourself from chaos and you'll experience rejuvenation. 